All right. Blade Runner. 2049. 2049. This movie was so long. It was really long. But I did enjoy it a little bit more than the other. Oh, yeah. 100%. This is way better than the original Blade Runner. Now, I know that you avoided watching this for a while because you wanted to make sure to watch the first one before you saw it. Do yeah. you still feel like that's the case? Um, I mean, I, I would say you don't have to, but I'm glad that I did because it's something that would just bother me. Yeah. I I don't think... There was any information given from Blade Runner that you wouldn't have been able to get from Blade Runner 2049 if you just watched that one. Yeah. Um, it's kind of cool to see how far they've come visually. It's kind of cool to see how much they changed uh, in telling the story. But there's. Yeah. You can really. I think you can watch this without seeing the first one. I think you can overall, yeah. Uh, but this is a hike to get through. It is two hours and 50 minutes. Is it that it long? It is very long, yeah. And it's it's less noticeable, though, I think, because it's more enjoyable. Yo, I didn't realize it was that long. Well, there's there's actually a story arc from uh, <laughs> that happens. Um, yeah. And the acting is, you know pretty decent oh yeah it's it's way better um the visuals in 2049 are amazing like they're good in the first one but in this one they're you know just breathtaking and yeah. i think it really deserves to be seen on the big screen which unfortunately is a little late to do now but still even yeah. watching it on a tv it was really enjoyable and um why can't i think of the main actor's name I keep wanting to say Ryan, Ryan Gosling. Um, <laughs> Nolan Richardson says the the picture of you looks like I'm just watching you dance. Your uh, your fancy picture. Yep, that story of our life. <laughs> me me watching you dance forever. Um, yeah, no Taylor Taylor refuses to be on on stream because he thinks he's too ugly. Because I am the elephant man. <laughs> But uh, no, uh, Ryan Gosling has a, a really interesting story arc where he he is a Blade Runner himself, but he's also a replicant. And we know that from the beginning. You're aware. Yeah, it's there was there was a scene. It was like the opening scene where it was like moments before you actually know that he's a replicant. And I'm like, how much you want to bet? He's going to be a replicant. It's going to be this big reveal. <laughs> and then it wasn't. It was just a regular <laughs> part yeah. of the story. And they, I was like, well, that's good because I would be disappointed if they tried to make me think he wasn't and then he was and I already knew yeah. he was. They, they, they mentioned it in the movie that now it's a lot easier to figure out who is a replicant, which makes sense, right? Um, the longer you're around people. So living in Thailand, there's... You know, I'm around a lot of Thai people. I'm around a lot of Burmese people, Korean, you know, not as many Koreans, but um, a lot of different ethnic groups. And yeah, you, when I first moved here, I couldn't tell the difference between any of them. You know, I was, I, right. know that, I don't know if that sounds racist, but I don't really care. It's hard to, it's hard to be like, oh, you're from this country. You're from that country when they all look, you know, have very similar attributes. But now after mm -hmm. been here for almost eight years, I can pretty much tell, you know, where they're from and even within inside that country, which part they're from, just because there's subtle little differences. And the reason I'm saying all this yeah. is it makes sense that you would be able to tell replicant right away now, opposed to them blending in. They, they stand out because there's those subtle differences. Yeah, and I think so. So they're being built now by a different company, yes. and I feel like that was one of their selling points. Was it's a lot easier to tell. Like that's you know intentional. So 
that was one of the issues I had with the first movie was in the opening um, words or whatever you want to call it. I want to call it a crawl, but I don't think it's a crawl. Uh, it says that the Tyrell company was shut down because of all the attacks, but they went up to Nexus 8, which is yeah. three versions past the Nexus 5s, which is when I thought they got shut down. So the, the company continued until Nexus 8s, which was Dave Bautista. He was a Nexus 8, which I thought surprisingly good in this. Uh, oh, yeah, for sure. I like Dave Bautista. Well, yeah, he's fun as Drax, right? But that Drax is a goofy character in itself. I think it's a little easier. But Dave Bautista in yeah. this was like was serious and like kind of beat up and gruff or, you know, rough around the edges, whatever. Grizzled. grizzled thank you <laughs> i don't know what happened to that word gruffled. he's a grizzled he's a veteran, gruffled veteran. <laughs> he was gruffled um, but he gruffled and grizzled. He, i thought he did a really good job and uh yeah i don't know it's the if it wasn't so long i think i would have enjoyed it a lot more and they yeah. i think they took their time to showcase the visuals like, I think that was a big selling point of how beautiful the movie looks. So they they yeah. really let it breathe. You know, the, the scenes went on for a very, you know, long extended take of just him walking around and him kind of looking. And, you know, it, they did better with the detective work in this. Ryan Gosling is much more of an investigator than Deckard was in the oh, first one. Oh, for sure. You know, like you felt like yeah. he's finding clues and figuring things out and like taking little baby steps and moving towards the goal, but not being sure where that's at yet. And that was much more engaging where with the first one, it was just like going here, going there, going here, going there. All right. Movie's done. Yeah. And uh, yeah, no, I, I thought it was good. What What's your overall opinion? Yeah, I agree. I, I, I thought it was much more engaging uh i was definitely like after so after watching the first one i was like i i don't have a whole lot of hope for the next one but you know whatever but after like the first 10 15 minutes i was like this is this is definitely a very different movie uh like something i can enjoy so i i did like it uh considerably more uh i i liked the care i thought all the characters were great um I liked I like Ryan Gosling. I liked his boss. Uh, what's her name? I didn't, Robin Wright I didn't Penn. Like her. She was kind of annoying. Yeah. No. I liked uh, his. I don't know, girlfriend, whatever yeah, she the, was. Uh, the his program. What do you call that? The hologram. Hologram. Yeah. That that scene at the end uh, when she's destroyed. Yeah. That was upsetting. Really? It was like sad to me. I thought I was pretty I sad. I, it was so predictable when it was. It was predictable. I I and I give it that, but uh, I don't know. Maybe because kind of for the first part, you see, and she kind of is this program, and you don't know. Like she's just acting how she was designed to be yeah. made, right? To to make people feel like she's real. But it, it kind of showed that it that wasn't just the case. Mm. You know, like she was almost as real as he was and you know she actually did care for him she i mean she was helping him out figure stuff out and then at the end like she knew she was going to be destroyed like and it was like upsetting yeah i don't know yeah it it was their relationship was really fascinating because right if he he him as a replicant basically a robot or a computer right like whatever whatever you want to consider him he doesn't have yeah real emotions everything is is implanted in him all his memories are implanted to like give him a seed mm -hmm. to grow off of but it's not really i mean it's basically inside out right the kids movie mm -hmm. where they they give him ideas that are pillars for his personality and um yeah they his relationship with her makes sense because he's not a person he's a robot and so her being essentially the same thing but a hologram like for them to fall in love is like yeah i can 
I can track with this. I, I get it. Like he's not, he doesn't need depth more than that because he doesn't have depth more than that. And yeah, exactly. they do a good job at making you feel like he, he does, but it, in reality, he doesn't. Like even in the reality of the story, he doesn't. He he is what you think he is in the beginning, but they trick you into thinking that he's more than that. But yeah. and so I, I enjoyed their relationship, and I enjoyed the juxtaposition when they would cut outside and show the uh, the ads of her. Uh, I think her name yeah. is Joy, um, and it, it'd be like. Yeah. She was so loving and like so like just what he needed, and yet you would it would cut out and it'd be like whatever you need, you know, joy will be for you type of thing. And it's like, okay, how much, how much is this her becoming her own personality or her own thing, and how much of this is just her programming, which was like a really uh, interesting idea to play with. Because my opinion is that everything that she did was just programming. Um, you, yeah. you, I think you find out when uh, the prostitute comes and right, they they become one person. The hologram overlays on top of the the prostitute so he can be with a physical mm-hmm. version of her. Uh, and she's like the the prostitute at the end or when she's leaving. It's like, you know, I I've been in you like I've I was mixed with you and there's there's not really as much depth as you're acting like there is saying, you know, basically just saying like you, you're not really anything. You're just a program in which I thought was, was an interesting take on it. Um, Do you think, or, okay, sorry, let me rephrase. Was there a point in the movie where you thought, Oh, this is, he is the kid of Harrison Ford. Not really because I, it came out of nowhere too fast. Uh, Cause she's like, she joy tells Ryan Gosling, what if you're the kid? You were probably the kid. You're right around that age. And I was like, Oh no, this isn't, that's not the case. Like it, it felt like too big of a reveal too out of the blue for me to buy. I, I at first didn't buy into mm. it, and then he found out that there were what there were two born under those circumstances. Yeah, and I was like, "Oh, it's tw- it's twins." Mm. Yeah, right. I was like, "So it's him," and then there's going to be another one out there. And they say that she died or something happened to her, but we don't yeah. find out. So I'm like, oh, "Okay, so that that I was like, this is pretty cool." I was like, "I, I feel like uh, I'm onto this." And then there comes that point at the end when it's revealed that it's not him, yeah. right? They almost make him feel stupid for for thinking that. Like, oh wait, what you thought yeah. it was you? And I remember thinking, I was like, I feel stupid for thinking That's it too. What they were doing. So it made me feel stupid. <laughs> That's oh, what I know. they were going for. It worked perfectly. <laughs> no, I thought. I was like, I feel so dumb for even. I thought that was that. a great reveal, though, that it was the oh, girl sure. trapped in that room. Because I the memory girl. I didn't think about was. her at all after he left. Like. I thought yeah, I, I thought it either. was weird that she started crying when she saw the memory. I was like, mm, that's mm. strange. Like I thought it was just because it was upsetting memory. Yeah. Like Well for, that's like, yeah. For that's anybody. what I thought they were trying to tell, but I was like, that's a weird reaction to that story. Even seeing it, like little kids get beat up. It's it sucks, but it's not like you're not gonna bawl about it. You know what I mean? But then to find out that yeah. it was her memory that she implanted into him is like, oh, okay. Mm-hmm. I, I get why she's so upset because that that horse, I mean, I think it was more about the horse than getting beat up that made her cry. You know what yeah. I mean? Like it wasn't like a traumatic yeah. thing about getting beat up. It was losing the horse that she still doesn't have, and mm-hmm. which was interest, interesting. Um, but we find out that that girl, the memory maker, is the daughter of Deckard and Rachel, which I yeah. did not enjoy that idea. I didn't think I didn't know. I nope. thought that was dumb. It didn't make sense. Cause again, I don't understand what replicas are. And I guess I had talked about it in the last episode. Well, yeah. That's the same. Are thing. they robots? But yeah. I guess we find out that they are, they have skeletons that they are. Um, what's the word? 
not natural. Um, I want to say biodegradable, but that's not e- either. Uh, biological, maybe. Maybe I don't know that they they are more they're closer to humans than they are robots, but they're not right. real. And so I I kind of get it. They figured out how to have babies, but it just seemed weird that Deckard could have a baby with Rachel. And then that throws in the extra question of is Deckard a replicant and replicants can have babies with each other or can they cross breed? And it was all just, well, that was, that was my whole thing was they prided themselves on making these things as realistic as possible. Right. Especially if you refer back to the first one and Rachel, like I was talking about was the top of the line, like hard to detect that she's even a replicant and they can die just like humans can, this and that. Why is it so far-fetched that one can get pregnant? I don't know. It's It didn't seem like it should have been well, like, that big of a stretch. Imagine your PlayStation getting pregnant. Doesn't that seem more complicated than playing a video game? Yeah, but also if I shoot my PlayStation, it's not going to bleed. Or drown. Or talk to me. No. Yeah, I didn't understand. I yeah, I just don't get I don't get the rules. Yeah. They're not this clearly is similar. defined. We were we were talking a little bit about Harry Potter before this and uh that was one of the things. It's like you have to have really well established rules. And this series, the Blade Runner series, doesn't seem to quite hit that mark to where I can understand what's happening. It's just Things happen, and then you're like, oh, "Okay, now I know they can drown." Yeah, but it's it's I I know exposition is uh, can be a drain on movies when you're like, "There's too much having to lay all this yeah. stuff out." Yeah, but you it's it's important to to you want to go along with the story. You don't want to be playing catch up mm-hmm. when things are happening. And I felt like every new thing was like, "Oh, okay." I guess you can fall off a, you know, five-story balcony after you get shot and survive. That's something replicants can do. Yeah. Or replicants can just barrel through walls and not have a problem. I guess that's something replicants can do. Or you can get stabbed and not react. That's something replicants can do. Or you can drown. Or you, you know what I mean? Like it's just like it, it was never quite established what a replicant can and can't do. And what they understand and what they don't understand. Yeah, no, I agree. So it, it did make it a little hard to follow at, at, at points. Uh, but, I, I mean, if you put all that aside, you it's kind of it's one of those things where you're just like, well, you, yeah, you just kind of have to go along with it. No. I, uh, I thought the baseline test. Yeah. So the baseline test was basically the test deckard was given in the first one but they updated it and improved it and i thought it was so much better i thought it was really an interesting idea but here's the thing where they'd be like i okay so that test was to to find out if someone was a replicant or not right so ryan gosling no no that 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 test was to make sure that they weren't getting influenced by the world Oh no! Okay, so I mean, in the original Blade Runner. Yeah, 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 yeah. That was to check if they were a replicant or not in the original one. Sorry. So it's the same test, but for a different purpose at this point in this. Yeah, okay. basically. I I don't know if it's like they built off of that test, but they took the elements in concept from that movie. Yeah. F- into this one, I right? I did like but how I they think did. they improved on it. It was. Uh, I don't know. It, it it was it was cool. I liked it. Yeah. So they would ask questions like, uh, "Do you ever feel lonely?" And then they would say cells or something else. There was another word. Uh, um, oh, what was it? Cells. Cells and something else. I don't remember exactly. Yeah. But they would they would throw out these questions to try to trip them up emotionally, and see if they could respond correctly just by overlooking the original question. Yeah. And it was like so fast paced that they, they couldn't, he kept up the first time passed perfectly. But when he started to think that he was the baby, the, 
the the baby of Deckard and Rachel yeah. that he was like he, becoming he, more human and he, failed the test. <clears throat> and he failed it which was really interesting like that that him just considering that he wasn't what he thought he was started to influence Trigger him. an emotional response and, yeah um i can you explain what happened when the prostitute put the tracker in the pocket did that make any sense to you at all no be because after that happens he finds deckard and then the the blade runners find them right right and i was like oh she's she was working for them they get attacked he gets left behind then the prostitute and this group of people find him later. Yeah, that was confusing so was to me. The tracker just for the prostitute and her group of people, or was it for the Blade Runners? Did the Blade Runners just figure out where they were? I I was very confused. Yeah, about what was going I, on that, with all that that part confused me. Uh, and then I tried to like go back and look at it, and I couldn't find anything that really made sense. So I just kind of moved on. Yeah. Also, Jared Leto. Pretty useless. Yep. Right. Absolutely. Like his character, it was like world building, but nothing happened to him. He's like, he was a a motivator, but I don't know. His he didn't have any story. No. Nothing was resolved. He just. He just was there. Like you don't even see him end. Like he's fine, right? Nothing. He doesn't die. Nothing. I don't believe so. Nothing happens to him. Yeah. They just escape him. Um. But yeah, so everything is about Chris or Chris. I don't know why I keep on saying Chris. Ryan Gosling trying to figure out who this kid is. Figures out that it was the memory maker girl, and that it is Deckard's daughter. Yeah. And he uses his third act of his story, the third part of his story. To bring back uh, Deckard to the daughter, yeah. and he sacrifices himself. And uh, it, I, I thought it was a really good way to wrap up his storyline. Yeah, you know, like he was emotionless in the beginning. Then he thought he was someone special, and then he decided to be special in a different way by sacrificing himself. Yeah, yeah. and I, I thought it was cool. Yeah, I agree. I, I did enjoy this movie. Anything else about it? Um, Any other thoughts, ideas, questions, concerns? No, I don't think so. It is what it, it is. is. It, for how long it is, it's actually pretty short on story. Right. Like I said, it, it it's much more focused on the visual and the world building, which is cool. It's an experience, but it's not one I'll probably ever rewatch. I probably won't, even though I'd probably give it like a, maybe like a three, maybe a two. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I probably won't watch it again unless it's on and yeah, I'm I, somewhere or something. Yeah, I can't, I can't imagine going back. Like, this is, the story-wise, this could have been less than 90 minutes. Oh, easily, for sure. And tell, told the same story. Yeah. And uh, they just, they spent a very long time. Like, they let everything breathe, which is nice, but it is just a bit too much for my taste. Um, yeah, no, I agree. Oh. But overall, pretty good movie. I'll give him that. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, um, I haven't talked to you about this yet, but I think for our next episode, what we should watch is Unbreakable. Unbreakable. Bruce Willis oh, in that Shyamalan. Yeah, okay. And so if you want to, if you go over to Patreon, you can listen to that episode right now or it'll come out next week. But <clears throat> for a dollar, you can help us out over on Patreon. Yeah. And uh, you can follow us on Twitter. And I seen that pod. Like us on Facebook. And we'll be back with Unbreakable.